Have you ever been jealous of yourself? Yeah, I didn't think so. What if the new guy at work was identical to you in every way except better? Better with work, better with women, and even better with his own mother. It's like you're taking over your own life from yourself. Confusing, I know. Well, that's what happens in 2013's The Double. While I may give you my opinion on the film here, that's no substitute for experiencing it yourself. Links to the movie are in the description as well. As the title screen appears and disappears without any fanfare, we open up to Simon falling asleep on the subway, only to be woken up by a stranger telling him he's in his spot. With an entire subway car of empty seats, even the shy Simon looked like he wanted to question the man. As he looks into the next subway car, he sees the face of Hannah. An awesome bit of foreshadowing here. Hannah is actually a palindrome, which means it's spelled the same backwards. Perfect to represent the film's theme of double. His daydream is quickly interrupted when the subway comes to a stop and people begin loading his car with all sorts of boxes. Poor guy can't catch a break. I already feel bad for him. Even as he catches up to Hannah, he still only gets within throwing distance before something else gets in the way. After an amusingly sad interaction with a gate guard, he's finally allowed access to his work location. I'm not entirely sure if this is supposed to be set in the past or an insanely bleak future, but either way, this feels so crushing. Simon sits at his desk pondering his future while he looks around at all of the elderly co-workers that are slowly draining their life away. As he gets up and takes a short walk around his office floor, he comes across a picture of the office from the past. As he looks back over the office, he realizes that it hasn't changed in the slightest bit. Depressing. As he follows his high-strung boss, he finds out in the most inconvenient way possible that he's going to be mentoring his boss's slacker daughter. I just quit at this point. As Simon returns to his work, we catch a glimpse of his genius way to talk to the girl he likes. Simon is hopeless and it shows terribly. Simon finishes his shift with a tense phone conversation with his mother, who apparently has no faith in him at all. As he tries to leave for the day, even the elevator plays tricks on him. As Simon spends time with his mother in the home she's been placed in, we find out a little more about who Simon works for while a commercial plays with him in it. Even his own mother pretends not to know which person in the commercial is him. Your mother says you're a strange boy. At least we don't have to question what his mother thinks about him. As Simon leaves to return to his own home, we see that his own apartment is barely more than a studio apartment. The more I watch, the more I feel like this is actually set in an alternate timeline in the 80s, but where the 80s sucked instead of whatever actually happened. To top it all off, he's a creeper. He turns off his TV to go over to the telescope he has set up at his window, which is fixated on Hannah's window across the way. It would almost be romantic if it wasn't so so creepy. While he's creeping on her, he notices that she throws some pieces of paper away down the community trash chute. He runs over and collects the pieces out of the trash. When he looks through a telescope after coming back home, he notices a man standing outside on the ledge, spying back to him with a pair of binoculars. Then suddenly, soon after, the police arrive to collect the body. Somehow, even the police questioning him on the experience feels as though he's being interrogated instead of questioned. Well, hopefully that's not foreshadowing at its finest. While he stands there pondering the suicide, Hannah walks up behind him and starts asking him about the encounter. This prompts him to realize that life as a loner is terrible, so he asks her to go to dinner with him. The two of them go to the local cafe. As he takes a chance to reach for her hand, he gets right next to her hand before she pulls him out of his trance. Simon is never going to get the girl at this rate. Hannah continues on her rant of one of her exchanges with the man that killed himself. As she gets more worked up, it becomes a little obvious to Simon that her exchange caused the man to feel lonely enough to jump from the ledge. Later on, this poor man exchanges his TV, which is his one belonging for a pair of earrings for Hannah. Of course, something goes wrong. When he gets to the entrance to the mandatory work ball, it turns out he's not on the guest list. He's got more determination than I've ever had. I'll give him that. Simon is left with finding an alternative route of sneaking in. As he approaches Hannah, the gate guard stops him. Of all people! So close! As he's escorted from the premises, he's walked right by the owner of the company, which leaves a terrible first impression on his boss. Feeling defeated, Simon marches back to the courtyard outside his apartment where he sees the shadow of a familiar man cross by. When he makes it up to his apartment, he looks through his telescope to the apartment across the way. He gets a glimpse of the figure just in time before the blinds get shut. Honestly, with his crap luck with everything else in his life, there's nothing that would surprise me at this point. 
The next day, Simon makes it to the elevator just in time to ride up to work with Hannah. A short and awkward conversation later and Simon sets off the alarm which gets him detained. And after being detained, he's written up and his ID is corrupted. We shouldn't be surprised by any bad thing that happens to Simon at this point. While Simon continues to mentor his boss's daughter, an announcement begins at the front of the office about a new employee being transferred from a sister company. Simon pushes his way to the front so he can see who it is, but when he gets to the front, he can't believe his eyes. I'd probably pass out too. After coming to, he lays eyes on the new employee, James, whose demeanor you can already tell is completely opposite of Simon. After Simon asks his one work friend if James reminds him of anyone, he gets some pretty harsh truths from him. Well, I suppose if your one friend is telling you that, then there must be some truth to it. As Simon and James leave work together, somehow they end up going to the same cafe as before together as well. After an interaction with the waitress that shows the difference in the two, the two of them actually Actually head to a bar next, where James immediately starts talking to some woman by the pool tables. You can already tell that Simon would have never done that because he's literally sitting at the bar watching James from the sidelines with a worried expression on his face. After James asks Simon which girl he wants, Simon becomes uneasy with the situation and gets up to go to the bathroom where he bumps into a big guy on his way. As Simon tries his best to weasel out of the situation, James decides to get involved once the big guy gets a little more aggressive. I'm not gonna lie, I'm even a little jealous of how smooth James is. As the two of them run away, they wind up on the subway where Simon tells James about Hannah. While Simon expresses his desire to reach out to Hannah, James tells Simon that he has to go for it. Simon expresses how he feels so invisible and incapable of being the man he wants to be. Somehow, that conversation ends with Simon carrying an unconscious James off of the subway and back to his apartment where he lays him down in his own bed. There's probably nothing creepier than tucking yourself into bed only to go to your creeper telescope to spy on the girl you love. The next morning, Simon's luck starts to turn around as he realizes that his friendship with James comes with benefits. I would have taken that time to have some choice words with that gate guard, but I guess it's best not to press your luck. Then a new plan becomes clear when James reminds Simon of a switching plan they apparently came up with the night before. While Simon seemed as confused as I was when James said they talked about it the night before, he reluctantly switches places with him and takes his test. In return, James babysits the boss's daughter who gets a new taste of who she thinks is Simon. When James doesn't return to switch back, Simon becomes a little concerned about what might be happening. Soon after, Simon goes to see Hannah at her office and tries a bunch of advice that James gave him, but it's almost as though the fact that Simon is the one saying it means no one will ever really see him. It's almost a physical pain whenever Simon interacts with Hannah, or anyone for that matter. Once they are all three on the subway together, James tells Simon to stay his tongue out at her like a lizard. If this isn't grade A pickup advice, then I don't know what is. Well, I'll be damned, that actually worked. Well, Simon's life has taken a magnificent turn, or so we thought. After Hannah meets Simon at the same cafe as before, it turns out that all she wants to do is talk to Simon about James. After she tells Simon that she's never met anyone like James, he obviously gets a little stirred and confused by this. It's not too hard to process seeing how this is the most forward Simon has been for the entire film. Yet, when he asks her what makes James unique, she can't give him anything other than the fact that you you can just tell by looking at him. Once Simon tells James about the encounter, James decides it's a good idea for them to switch again. So while they prepare for Simon's date as James, James goes over a lot of do's and don'ts that make Simon unsure of himself. I just don't know if that's me. Well, that's a little harsh. Flash forward to their date and Hannah already looks like she can tell it's not James. Simon rushes to the bathroom where James is hiding out with a microphone and coaching Simon along the way. Once Simon explains that he needs James to patch things up, they switch positions again only for James to do too well at patching things up. James and Hannah share a passionate kiss before leaving the restaurant. This all causes Simon to get a little antsy. After he goes back to work, he rushes to Hannah's office where she is giggling with someone on the phone while ignoring Simon. Another creepy guy's here again. Can anyone say psychotic break incoming? 
To top it all off, Simon finally gets the guts to take his work to the colonel, who owns the business. When he does, James pops out from around the corner, snatches Simon's work, and takes credit for it with the boss right in front of him. No good was ever going to come from all of this. Later that night, Simon looks through his telescope where he finds James's room. It's here that he sees James fooling around with the boss's daughter. In an attempt to foil James's plans, Simon calls Hannah as James and asks her to come up to his room. I know, it's switching left and right now. Once Hannah goes to his room, she is turned away, but the boss's daughter is furious and leaves as well. Simon thinks he's won until… Well, I'd feel like crap too. In an attempt to nut up, Simon sits down with James and gives him a list of demands which doesn't go as planned. James then pulls out a Polaroid of him and the boss's daughter and proceeds to blackmail him into giving him the key to Simon's apartment for his future rendezvous. Suddenly, Hannah appears at Simon's desk with the concern that James is doing things with other girls. As she explains the words that James has told her, Simon realizes that he took every word that Simon explained to him and used them in his stead. As Simon's irrational behavior continues, he can feel himself being taken farther from Hannah and he can feel James taking more control of his life. Then a huge twist in the plot happens. You don't exist anymore. Never saw that coming. It's sad when even the computer forgets about you. Once Simon gets wind of James stealing his biggest project yet, things take an even darker turn as everyone turns against Simon. Look at that face, that's the face of evil, it's perfect. I know this is a tense, serious situation, but he just pulled a guy's arm off. Did you really think I could just blow over that? This is cinema gold. Of course, that confrontation ends in Simon being escorted to the subway by gate guard. That guy needs a raise. When Simon is home, he attempts to write a suicide note before opening his window. But when he does so, he notices something wrong in Hannah's room. Here we are. Has she ever tried anything like this before? No. Fantastic. If I ever had to deal with a nurse like this, I'd probably lose my mind on top of what had already happened. Once the doctor pulls Simon aside, he explains that Hannah has actually had a miscarriage on top of everything. Also, a side note, who is the doctor? This gate guard needs a raise. Simon actually takes Hannah back to her apartment where she says that she will eventually try again, and she thinks that Simon should try to kill himself. Has any of the treatment Simon has dealt with really been necessary? I mean seriously, even if he was a nobody, would you waste these perfectly fine insults on nobody? After Simon leaves, Hannah notices the earrings he had bought for her, and she looks through a journal that Simon had kept of all of her trash pieces of paper. Yeah, I hope you feel like crap, or maybe just less creeped out by the guy. Once Simon gets back to his apartment, he listens to a voicemail that explains poorly that his mother has passed away. When he tries to attend the funeral, he finds that James is already there and tries to turn what family he has left against him. Oh look, a connection no one saw coming. Just kidding, still cool though. Suddenly, the priest charges at Simon like a madman with a shovel and Simon falls down in his mother's grave. When he comes to, he's lying next to the grave and his face hurts where he struck James. When he makes his way back to Hannah's apartment, he arrives with a ferocity that puts James to shame. When she answers the door, she knows exactly who he is and things begin to click for every character involved. She watches Simon march back to his apartment where he hangs handcuffs James to his bed. The tension created at this point is so palpable that you can't help but be involved in the story. He is about to jump. Well, this is exciting. Someone is about to jump, Simon is holding a knife to his own face, Hannah is walking around like a lost puppy. As Simon cuts his own face, it wakes James up as his face is cut too. Simon stands out on the edge looking over the courtyard. As James looks through Simon's telescope, he sees Simon wave to him before he jumps. Simon lands on an awning before making contact with the ground. When he does, Hannah comes running out to be with him. In turn, he's killed James in his room. As he rides to the hospital, he closes his eyes and the credits roll. Yet another abrupt artistic ending that still works out quite well. Everything got wrapped up quite nicely and I guess you could call that a happy ending, but the beauty of it is in the eyes of the beholder. What do you think? I hope you enjoyed the video and by all means watch the film for yourself. There's something there for everyone. If you did like it, leave a like on the video and suggest what I should watch next. Subscribe if you want to see more videos like this one and I'll see you in the next video.